What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2021 Mazda 3 Turbo. Huge thanks to Mazda for providing me here with the new turbo version of the Mazda 3 to review for you guys today. So about the Mazda 3 Turbo, well this is one of the rare cases where a lot of you ask for a turbo. You know, they had this turbo engine in other vehicles and a lot of people wanted this engine in this car and Mazda listened and they have put it on not only the hatchback version here, but also the sedan. And so the turbo trim is a new top premium trim. So there is two different grades for it, but they both slot above a regular Mazda 3. So these are going to be starting just under 30,000 at 29,900. And then this premium plus version that I have here uh, is in the $34,000 range. Um, and I'll talk more about pricing towards the end of the video, but I think it looks very, very premium. It honestly looks nicer than some of the premium competitors that Mazda is going after here. You know, the BMW 228i's, um, you know, the Audi a threes, those types of things. I think this looks just as striking, if not much better than some of those do. It just looks so, so good up front there. It's just so wonderfully simple, but gorgeous at the same time. And I've already gushed over the Mazda 3's looks whenever I did the previous non-turbo versions of these vehicles. But I mean, just those headlights, which have these really intricate details within them, but they just look so sharp and very beautiful. I love how that also flows into this like gloss black plastic you have that ties into the grill, which juts out and you have these nice cuts in the front bumper there that really gives it some extra dimension. It's not just a flat front bumper like a lot of other vehicles out there these days. And then this one being the Premium Plus, that gives you this aero kit, which gives you this front air dam. And you also get a rear spoiler out back there and uh, also a rear diffuser. And you can also add the aero kit onto a non-Premium Plus if you just want the base turbo version and you don't want the extra toys you get here in the Premium Plus. Uh, also, uh, coming down to the sides, another thing you can get are optional BBS forged wheels. Now they're almost $4,000 for the set. So that would drive the price of one of these up much higher, um, but they are forged wheels which is cool but this one has the standard uh, 18 inch alloy wheels that are still nice and gloss black look really cool and uh, I think really nicely matches up with this polymetal gray color you have here but I personally love the hatch especially going around all the way to the back of the hatch here I love the more aggressive taillights you get here on the hatchback version and also another thing you'll notice about the turbos is that they have larger exhaust tips there and it's not overload you know it's not like they're melon launchers like you see on some other you know sportier vehicles that this also kind of can Competes with you know they're very subtle but it's just a little bit more and you know everything about this vehicle is just a subtle a little bit more sharp a little bit more edge than what you have in a regular Mazda 3 and I think it really spices this up in a very cool way some other enhancements are you have a gloss black rear diffuser there you have a turbo badge there on the back of the vehicle as well and uh, again that's also pretty subtle it's not shouty or anything I also love the rear spoiler so it is uh, you know it actually has like two layers to it which is a really cool look whenever you look up close at it and uh, so that is something that again you can add on to um, the lower trim if you'd like and I think that really nicely spices up the back end there if you were to get the regular sedan version of the Mazda 3 turbo you do get a very small lip spoiler there in the back instead it'll also have a front lip uh, that also spice up the front end on the sedan as well overall I think this thing just looks fantastic all right, so start them go for a drive. The Mazda 3 Turbo here uses the same new Mazda key as other Mazdas, which is really nice. It's a little bit on the larger side. I do miss the small, nice small Mazda key you had in the past. Buttons on the sides there, nothing on the back or anything. And it's a pretty nice feeling key. It is plastic, uh, but you know, feels a little bit more expensive on the sides here. It feels kind of like metal. And, uh, but yeah, so of course it's keyless access, keyless entry and push button start here in the Mazda 3 Turbo. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the engine start button. And it starts right up. If you're curious to hear about the interior in the Mazda 3, my wife and I actually did a full in-depth interior review on a non-turbo Mazda 3. It was the sedan version. Um, so you can go watch that if you want to hear all the details about this interior. Uh, the turbo interior is almost identical. There's a couple small little changes uh, and then one very large change. The big change is that the turbo models all come with a heated steering wheel, which is something that here in the United States we weren't able to get on any Mazda 3 up until now. So now you have a heated steering wheel, but it's only on turbo models but thankfully it does come on even the base turbo model uh, this premium plus version that I have here adds a couple of extra toys which are also new you have a frameless rearview mirror so that's uh, a new thing there and you also have a couple of extra buttons here on the left hand side because you now have your 360 camera and its view so it has a forward camera a rear camera and then that bird's eye view and uh, so it's nice that it has that it also has navigation as part of this premium plus package you lose the navigation in a regular turbo but of course you can't get navigation in uh, non-turbo 
turbo Mazda 3s. But um, so those are really the only changes. But I mean, the heated steering wheel is crucial, especially since Mazda is going after the premium market with this model. Um, you know, having the heated steering wheel is a must, and it's really nice you get it on all turbos. You also do get real leather seats here in the premium plus version. The regular turbo just has uh, leatherette seats, which are still really nice seats. I have you know sat in the leatherette Mazda seats many times. They're also very very nice, and so I don't think you know that's too big of a deal. But I didn't really like how the leather has these little perforations, and you see some color within the perforation, which is a very again subtle touch, um, but nice nonetheless. All right, so setting off in the 2021 Mazda 3 Turbo. Well, I have to admit that ever since they announced the turbo for the Mazda 3, I've been excited to get behind the wheel here. And uh, so the first thing that you notice here about it, obviously it's the same driving position, same feel as any other Mazda 3 from the get-go, uh, but they did actually do a lot of changes um, around the engine. It's not like they just tossed the engine in and that was it. So the first thing is that Mazda said they actually increased the resistance for the throttle. And they did that because, you know, they study how humans interact with cars and they're very, very detailed with how they do that research and so they wanted it to feel predictable so that whenever you get on the gas you know whenever you have much more power that you don't uh, you know it, that it feels natural and in other vehicles you know they have very jumpy throttles and Mazda didn't want that they wanted it to feel progressive and feel like how you would expect it to feel and how your body's expecting whenever you put your foot on the gas and so you know, it feels very good. Uh, brakes also um, feel the same. Now, they're actually the same brakes as any other all-wheel drive Mazda 3. So they did not upgrade the brakes for the extra power. Uh, but they have a really good feel. So it's a little bit of a stiffer brake pedal. But Mazda also says that they do that um, so that you actually use your calf muscle, which is stronger, instead of your shin muscle, which is weaker. And that's what you have to use with a lot of the lighter feeling brakes that are a little more sensitive to your touch. This is a little less sensitive, but um, it actually is supposed to cut down on driver fatigue. Um, um, so that's interesting. Uh, visibility is always really good in Mazda 3s, in my opinion. You know, you have a nice thin A-pillar here on these new gens. Um, the door sills do come up a little bit high. You know, so the glass isn't huge here compared to something like a Subaru Impreza, maybe. But, you know, it's really still very easy to see around. You have all the safety tech with blind spot monitoring, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, over your right shoulder, you might, you know, not be able to see great in certain instances and certain angles. But honestly, that rear window goes, you know, pretty far back. So I don't have an issue. I'm not one who complains about that rear um, you know blind spot that some others like to complain about anyway other things here listen to how quiet it is just cruising at 25 miles per hour and this is a smooth road but it's so refined and so that quietness is something you really notice right off the bat but uh, we'll talk more about the refinement in a minute but we're going to turn onto a back road here i'm putting it up into the sport mode i'll still leave the transmission in its automatic mode though but let's turn down onto this back road here and see how the Turbo Mazda 3 does. And here we go. Okay, okay, pretty responsive. All right, so it's short shifting on me a little bit here, which is uh, something I kind of expected because this turbo engine is really set up to give you punch in the low and mid range uh, power. It only has a 6,300 RPM redline, but anyway, pretty pretty punchy so it runs uh the two and a half liter turbocharged four cylinder engine you get in the other mazdas although it has been uh, changed a good bit here for the mazda 3 turbo but anyway it does 250 horsepower and 320 pound feet of torque on 93 octane gas this engine can safely run 87 octane and on 87 it'll do 227 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque uh so either way you have a very impressive vehicle especially that torque i mean that is bow loads of torque way more than you get in something like a Volkswagen GTI, even a Volkswagen Golf R at this point. Um, way more than you get in a WRX, any of those types of vehicles, and all the luxury competitors, the A3s, the 228i, um, you know, the CLA, you know, this has way more torque than all those. It has a good sound to it too, but man, that mid-range punch is where this thing really feels strong. It, it's pretty awesome. I'll slap it over into manual mode. We'll try out the transmission and how that feels. All right, so I'm just gonna punch it in first here. Wow, all right, very nice response. And man, yeah, second gear going from three grand to 4,500. This feels quick. Try the downshifts here now that we've slowed down. That's first. So yeah, the manual shifting still isn't great. It's this older six-speed auto. Anyway, we're coming up some corners here. Let's see how the Mazda 3 Turbo handles them. 
All right, so it, it rotates very nicely. And uh, I also feel like the steering might be a little bit lighter than a regular Mazda 3. I might be crazy, but honestly, it just, it felt a little weighty in the Mazda 3 and even the CX-30. And this feels a little bit lighter, which I like because it exaggerates the turn in a little bit more. And wow, you can really feel, so sport mode actually does do more of the torque vectoring. So this has the G torque vectoring plus system that Mazda uses, and you can feel that more, and it actually works more in sport mode, they say. And it really rotates nicely. Now, you don't have a ton of grip because we only are running these 215 wide Bridgestone all season normal tires, nothing sporty, and 215s are kind of narrow too. You can get 225s in some of the competition. So it's not the grippiest setup, but it makes the most of it. And honestly, it feels really good because it feels a little more lively. That back end kind of wants to, you know, feels like it wants to play. And they also said that they actually obviously tweaked the suspension to handle the extra weight of the engine up front there, you know, with the extra weight of the turbo and whatnot. So anyway, they say that the front suspension has been stiffened up. You have stiffer spring rates. And we also have a stiffer steering arm. And so that all contributes to, you know, helping to cope with the extra weight primarily, they said. But they also added that all 2021 Mazda 3s are actually going to be tuned to be a little bit stiffer. Um, so that'll be kind of interesting to, you know, see how that plays out in a regular uh, 2021 Mazda 3. But, you know, as far as as stiffness goes don't be scared off by that because it still is super soft and comfortable um, you know I have no complaints whatsoever with the ride it is really smooth very appropriate very premium as, as well wow but I love how punchy this feels I mean it's not as crazy as a WX or something as far as being peaky or you know giving you drama but it's just the drama of you know punching it you know just when you're rolling and just having it really take off nicely Zero to 60, by the way, it wasn't quoted by Mazda that I could see, but um, you know, I think the estimates are saying somewhere in the low six second range. And part of the reason why it's not faster than a low six second is because the six speed automatic, it's a little bit dated and it has some taller uh, drive ratios to it. So it's not as aggressively geared as some of the other competitors in this segment. So I think honestly, if this had shorter gearing, this would feel even crazier with its you know performance, but I think it really is the mid-range. That is what is gonna be the takeaway thing. You know, this might not knock your socks off off of the line, although it was impressive. I think it's just whenever you're rolling, especially if you're in manual mode or if you're in sport mode with the you know transmission doing its thing in drive here, that's where and it gives me a downshift immediately. You know, I don't have any waiting around. That's the nice thing with an old school automatic like this, is there isn't any games you play, you know, you just stomp on it, it gives you a downshift and goes. You don't have to do two or three downshifts like you do in some of these other transmissions with you know eight or nine gears these days this one you know one downshift you're good especially with all the power this engine has and let's do another acceleration almost felt a tiny bit of torque steer out of the front end there uh, just it does do a very good job putting the power down though all turbo Mazda 3s are all-wheel drive uh, by the way and so it gives you very you know sure-footed feeling and puts that power to the ground doesn't waste any of it um, but man oh man this thing feels great. And by the way, you know, going back to the engine here, you know, some people think they just shoehorned in this engine and called it a day, and that is not the case. Like I said, in addition to all the suspension changes, just the engine in general, they say actually the block has a different casting, um, and there's a lot of changes they had to make to make it even fit in this car, and not only fit in this car, but work with this car, because this is the next generation of Mazda, you know, as far as the platform goes. And so to make the engine, which was previously on the old platform stuff, work with the new platform stuff was also an additional challenge they had to do, but they said they actually switched to a water to air intercooler for the turbo uh, to help with packaging. The intake was redesigned obviously to work with the smaller constraints of this engine bay. They also redid the exhaust so that you know that would work properly with this engine. And so the fact that it actually retained the same horsepower as all the other Mazda vehicles with this turbo engine was actually a challenge on its own. Um, and so that's great that they were able to you know do so much torque because again that torque figure just beats everything else in this segment. Another acceleration. Oh, got a little bit of chirp out of the front tires that time. All right, coming up some other corners here. Brakes still feel really good. Wow, the turn-in is quicker though. That's one thing in the sport mode here you get with the G vectoring control. Uh, but also, it just feels really light still. You'd think this engine, you know, would make it feel a little bit heavier, but these still only weigh 3,383 pounds. And man, this thing feels 
so dynamic. Wow, I'm impressed. And I was expecting the tires to let me down. They really don't. The whole thing just really plays, you know, plays so nicely and just wants to play along with you on those corners. I am so impressed with the way this thing handles. Um, I, oh, wow, I'm, yeah, I like this thing a lot on corners. It's really fun. And if you do want more grip, that's just a tire upgrade away. Very simple. Um, but I mean, the, the platform and everything is just so, so good. I mean, yes, you still have the torsion beam rear suspension. And I know a lot of people see that and they're like, that's bad. And yes, it might not be as advanced as some of the, you know, multi-link setups you get in a lot of the other competing vehicles. But uh, according to Mosley, this gives you actually, it gave them um, a smoother ride and it also, you know, just gave them still really good handling and there wasn't any noticeable decline. And I honestly, you know, it makes no difference to me. When I'm on a back road, it just depends on how it feels to me. This felt really good. It didn't feel crude compared to, you know, some of the competing uh, vehicles around corners. Honestly, it felt a lot better than some of the other uh, competing vehicles around corners. It just, again, I keep going back to it's just so playful and fun feeling around corners. I just want to keep taking it around more corners. And honestly, although sport mode is a lot of fun, I think this engine really loves the lower RPM so much more that in normal drive mode, I think this actually, at least around town is going to feel a little bit more punchy and maybe even a little more responsive because it just has that turbo just waiting for you right there and I also like the growl from this engine. It really sounds good. Uh, you know, you don't have any exhaust sound or anything from those larger exhaust tips. That's something you can easily fix in the aftermarket if you want. But uh, yeah, I think the whole experience just still feels just so nice. But yeah, man, this thing feels so strong just around town. It makes your uh, commuting and just running your errands that much more fun because it just feels like it just wants to rip right off the line even though you have you know like I said a very easy throttle response and stuff it just it the second you give it a little bit more and a little bit more gas it just is like all right let's go let's run and it's deceptive with how quick it is too because you know it doesn't feel like it's ripping your head off or anything but then you look at the speed and you're like this thing's hauling <laughs> and it's it's pretty impressive so yeah but anyway um I'm loving the Mazda 3 turbo here but I'm going to drive it for a couple more days uh, and then I'll come back and give you guys my final real world fuel economy as well as uh, you know my thoughts on the pricing and anything else that I noticed during my week of driving. All right, so I've been driving the Mazda 3 Turbo for a couple more days here. I only had this vehicle over a weekend uh, because it's just so new, but I still loved my time with it. I still managed to put over 92 miles on it here in the past couple of days, and. Uh, Every mile is just really enjoyable in these. I mean, they have just such a luxurious and smooth ride. I love the way this thing drives and combined with this amazing Bose stereo, which is hands down one of the best stereo systems in any car under $50,000. It really is impressive how Mazda manages to give you such a nice interior for very little money. But before I get into the pricing, I first want to mention my fuel economy. So over my 90, almost 93 miles of driving now, uh, my average has been 22.2 MPG. So that's pretty impressive in my opinion considering that these are rated at 23 in the city, 31 on the highway, and 26 combined. And so my driving was primarily, you know, city, suburban, back roads kind of driving. You know, I did do a little bit of highway driving, uh, but not a lot. And so um, honestly, in most of the driving I do like this in other press vehicles, uh, I end up getting like 2 mpg less than the city rating. So to be getting only, uh, you know, 0.8 mpg less than the city rating, I'm, you know, less than a mpg away, I think is really impressive. Uh, especially considering this turbo motor is so fun to push in that mid-range and it's just so punchy and I was enjoying that turbo punch quite a bit and I still have been managing to get almost the city rating which is very impressive in my opinion. That actually leads me to believe that this could potentially overperform those EPA numbers just based on, again, it's better than average performance in my experience. A couple other little things I want to mention here are uh, at nighttime, this has really great nighttime visibility and the uh, automatic swiveling headlamps you have here on these higher versions of the Mazda 3 are really well done. Um, they're very natural in the way they do that, but they are very helpful. I think they're excellent headlights. There's no cutoffs in the beam or anything like that. So that's great. Uh, two little things that aren't great in my opinion though about this. Uh, first is this automatic e-brake. It comes on every time you put it in park. You have to manually release it if you don't want to tap the gas when you're reversing, for example. So you know, if you're backing out of a parking lot and you're in reverse, you can't just let off the brake slowly to inch out like you can in other vehicles. You first have to tap the gas automatically and that does automatically release the e-brake, but then you gotta go back to the brake to you know slow yourself down um, whenever you're wanting to inch out of a parking spot. 
spot, which isn't great. I mean, you can manually go and disable it, but I just wish that if it is going to be an automatic e-brake that it just would turn off whenever you put the car in gear. There's no reason to have it on when you're in gear at all, in my opinion. So that's just one little complaint. Another small complaint is the gas tank is pretty small. Uh, it's 12.7 gallons, and you know, maybe in a regular Mazda 3 without a turbo, that's okay. You know, you're gonna get decent range, but when this is, you know, sucking down gas a little bit quicker with a turbo, like I said, I'm still impressed with the fuel economy, but uh, whenever this was delivered to me with basically a full tank of gas, I'm not sure how many miles the driver drove before he got to my house from the gas station, but it was showing me 230 miles of range. Maybe, you know, we can say it's 235, 240 tops is what you would get on a full tank. So it's dropping pretty quickly and I'm just beneath three quarters tank full and it's only showing me 150 miles left of range. Now, if you do the math with uh, even the city rating of this vehicle or even my own, you know, 22 MPG, you should still come out close closer to about 270 miles of range, even with that 22 MPG number. Um, but I'm guessing that this onboard computer gives you a conservative estimate so that you still have some remaining fuel in the tank, even whenever it's showing you zero on here, just to kind of protect you from you know going too low. But it just doesn't give you a lot of confidence on a road trip because it's like, man, I gotta fill up basically every like 200 miles. And uh, you know, that's just, it's not great, but you know, especially if you're doing around town driving and stuff like that. And once you are on the highway, I'm sure that estimate would, you know, stretch up higher and get you know close to 300 miles or so but just you know wish the gas tank was a little bit bigger minor complaint um Another minor thing I think might just be this car uh, is that the lane keeping assist system, which I left on, it, there was one or two times where I was dead set, dead set like right in the middle of my lane. I was not anywhere near the line and it started freaking out and wanting me to steer and it was kind of trying to nudge me towards the shoulder and I was fighting it. it, it the good thing with Mazda's system is that it always gives preference to the driver and it doesn't take control like some other systems try and do these days. So it was very passive in it's nudging but it kept like thinking that I was close to the center line and I was not and so I don't know if the calibration is just off on this car in particular or what but maybe try driving with the lane keeping assist system on if you're test driving one of these to make sure that it's not trying to steer you towards the shoulder but I think that might just be a glitch with this car but those are the only real things I can complain about everything else I have to give this thing glowing reviews it's just so nice to live with um, I really do appreciate that blend of luxury and the sportiness, but this is, you know, really a great choice for someone who wants something a little bit more mature, a little bit more subdued than what you're going to get with a WRX or even a GTI for that matter, which is, you know, very much a sleeper as well. But, um, you know, this just gives you a much nicer interior than the WRX or the GTI. I mean, by a long shot, it's not even a close comparison. I'm just so impressed with this. And so this gets back to the value thing that I was talking about earlier. So Mazda 3 turbos start just under $30,000. It's like $29,900. Now this one, as tested, including Destination, which does have that Premium Plus package on it, uh, this one comes at just under thirty-five thousand at thirty-four eight twenty, and that pricing is really impressive. So even if we do just compare it to the sportier stuff, because I know a lot of my fans on this channel are really into the sporty stuff, not so much the entry-level luxury stuff, but even if you look at the sporty stuff, a CVT WRX that has all the same equipment this does is gonna run you about $37,000. You know, same thing goes for a GTI, which by the way does not have all-wheel drive, but even a GTI, you know, that has leather seats, that has all the tech this has, you're gonna be well into the 30s with those as well, and you have less power. Granted, the GTI, again, because of its gearing, you know, is able to do a, basically the same zero to 60 time most likely as this vehicle. So performance wise, you know, you might not really notice a difference even though this does beat everyone on specs, uh, you know, but so no matter what, I just feel like you're getting a little bit you know, more car here with this than you do with the GTI. And I mean, this even overperforms stuff like a Kia Stinger, at least the current GT line version with the two liter motor, but even with the new version coming in, that just barely matches uh, the torque figure of this, although it does have a little bit more horsepower and you do have eight gears in that, so it might feel a little bit more punchy. But the Stinger, you know, has a hatchback. It does have a little bit more back seat space and a way bigger hatch. Um, so if you want better practicality, the Stinger might be a good choice for you for that, even that four cylinder one. It's, a lot of fun and I think that's a great WRX alternative as well. Um, but even that, you know, those you're gonna be still in the high 30s for one of those GT lines and this is gonna undercut that by several thousand dollars as well. So, you know, if you are a hot hatch fan, again, you have to see how this transmission feels to you, but if, you know, you appreciate a real automatic, by the way, and not just the uh, CVT slush box you get in a, you know, normal WRX automatic, um, obviously this is not gonna be as good as the GTI's dual clutch auto, so that's something to keep in mind. But if you're okay with the transmission and the gearing of you know how it's uh, spaced out with the gears 
then I think this is a no-brainer, honestly, against the WRX because, like, like I said, nicer interior, more power, uh, great looks and all that kind of stuff. It's a fresh new thing. You know, the, both the GTI and the WRX currently are very old and dated, and they've been around for, you know, half a decade now in their current forms, basically. And so this is, you know, very fresh feeling, very modern, luxurious, and uh, just very impressive in that regard. But Mazda is really going after the premium brands with, you know, their newest Mazda products. And that's one of the reasons why they gave this turbo engine was so that this can compete more uh, on a level playing field with stuff like the BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe, the A3 from Audi, and also the Mercedes A-Class and even the CLA. And compared to those, uh, this also has way more power. It's a little bit quicker, most likely in a 0-60 than a lot of those as well. And uh, again, this just, I mean, completely demolishes those as far as value goes, you know, to get one of those with all wheel drive and with all the same comparable equipment that you would get here in the Mazda 3 with his premium plus package especially, uh, you're going to be looking at, you know, something in the low $40,000 range, $42,000, dollars So you're looking at $8,000 more than this. And yes, you don't have the brand prestige of saying, I have a BMW or I have a Mercedes or an Audi. But if you're someone who doesn't need a badge, um, like I said, I think this is actually nicer in a lot of ways. I think maybe like the Mercedes A-Class has more metal, feels a little bit higher tech and a little bit uh, cooler you know, looking with its interior design. The A3 is pretty dated at this point for the current Gen A3. Um, and the 2 Series Grand Coupe has a nice interior as well, but I think the materials in here feel a little bit nicer than they do in some of those. Like the Mercedes A-Class does have some parts that do feel really cheap beyond uh, you know the big screens and the ambient lighting and all that kind of stuff that you get in the Mercedes. And then you add in, for example, depreciation or you add in the uh, you know maintenance costs of those Germans compared to this I mean it's just crazy so I mean if you lease the Germans you know maybe you'll come out ahead or something but uh, if you're planning to actually buy your vehicle and keep it for a while I mean this is gonna come out way ahead on depreciation way ahead on maintenance stuff and I have a few charts here from carage.com but you can go to carage.com check it out for yourself um, you know just compare the depreciation and how much you're gonna be losing with the German competitors versus this the Mazda holds its value much better and so that's another thing to consider because eventually you will probably sell this or trade it in and you know you're going to come out in a better place financially with something like this than those Germans as well further adding to that value component and the last little thing to mention about pricing too is that uh, this premium plus package is a very nice package to have and if you know you're fine paying almost 35 grand um, you know by all means go for it I think it's a good value personally if it would be my money I would go for the standard turbo which is it still gives you the heated steering wheel still gives you you know all the same other niceties here so you can get one of these you know still just as nice uh, again you do miss out on the aero stuff that I talked about at the beginning of the video you can add that back through a Mazda dealer and you know order an appearance package as well from the factory if you'd like um, but you know aside from the appearance stuff which I mean all Mazda 3s look really good anyway I think the appearance stuff helps but I don't think it's a necessity and so I think I would just go for the standard Mazda 3 turbo and with those you're coming out under $32,000 and I think it's uh, you know gonna be an even better value in that regard because you still have like I said all the same nice luxuries everything about this car just it, they really knocked it out of the park. I think it's fantastic. It's awesome that they decided to give it to, to everyone who asked for it and they priced it reasonably, which is something that can't be said for a lot of other vehicles these days, which are just ballooning in price. And yes, you know, paying over $30,000 for a Mazda 3 might seem crazy, but when you consider the, how it beats everyone on the specs, it beats everyone on the luxury, and it just undercuts all the actual luxury brands, it's a no-brainer in my opinion. I think it's a fantastic choice and I highly recommend it. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on the Mazda 3 Turbo here in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.